Is there a global arms race for drones? UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles have become crucial in modern warfare. Militaries all around the world are looking to upgrade their capabilities with drones. And they aren't just being used for airstrikes or reconnaissance. They can coordinate entire armies. Simply put, if you have drones, you have an edge. Cheaper than a fighter jet, saving boots on the ground and turning the globe into a battlefield. The Global Hawk, based here in Sicily, can travel halfway around the world on one tank of fuel. It can stay up in the air for more than 30 hours, carrying out surveillance. For decades, the US and Israel had a near drone monopoly, but not anymore. More countries are now closing the technological gap, building their own unmanned fleets. Two countries that have stood out have been China and Turkey. China took advantage of the fact that the United States refused to sell drones to its allies and made a massive sale of cheaper copies of the US unmanned aerial vehicles. Saudi Arabia bought them for its military operation in Yemen. Turkey has several domestically produced drones, such as the TAI Anka, the Bayraktar TB2, and the Bayraktar Akinji that provide surveillance, reconnaissance, and firepower. Turkey has started to export some of these drones to countries such as Qatar and the Ukraine. Over the past 10 years, many conflicts have seen drones, including in Syria, Libya and Nagorno-Karabakh. Their high demand has created a UAV boom. In 2019, the global drone market was worth over $10 billion. By 2027, the market is forecast to be worth more than $23 billion. And that's not surprising considering that there are already 30,000 military drones in use today. There's a reason why we use the word exponential. Uh, it's, it's advancing very, very quickly. Brian Wynn, the CEO of the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, says software and hardware in this field are advancing rapidly. And there are currently many types of drones on offer. From your ordinary combat drones to what's known as kamikaze or suicide UAVs, some drones can also breach the enemy's air defense and air missile defense systems. But it's the use of drone swarms that are most alarming. Inspired by swarms of insects, drone swarms involve multiple small UAVs and are able to self-organize to complete tasks as one unit. Army General John Murray, who leads the US Army Futures Command, said that drones, and most likely drone swarms, are something you're going to see on a future battlefield. I think we're already seeing some of it. The tactic has reportedly been used against a Russian air base in Syria and Saudi oil facilities. But for most people, this is the closest thing they've ever seen to a drone swarm. Given their effectiveness, it's no surprise that non-state actors, including terror groups, have been using drones as well. Eventually, ISIS started using drones as a sort of do-it-yourself air force. They became especially prominent in Mosul as ISIS lost more and more of the city. When they weren't dropping homemade explosives from the drones, they were using them to direct suicide bombers to their targets in the urban terrain. Mexican cartels have also been using drones to smuggle drugs across borders, avoiding more traditional land routes or underground tunnels. Cartels started getting creative. The smugglers are becoming frustrated, so they're moving to other location. In the past five years, smugglers have done everything to avoid getting caught at border crossings. This is a picture from Tijuana police. It's a crash drone. Six bags of crystal meth are strapped to it. But with every new technology comes a question of ethics. Governments and NGOs have been openly debating about whether military drones need to be regulated. Right now, aerial vehicles can be unmanned. But what happens when their decision-making also becomes unmanned? A drone loaded with a killer algorithm is a type of technology that has many worried. And even though humans do oversee the pull of the trigger now, that could change overnight. Because autonomous killing is not a technical issue. It's a legal and ethical one. What if all this technology was trying to kill me? 
We don't have weapons with artificial general intelligence or AI that's as smart as humans. But we do already have weapons that can use AI to search, select, and engage targets in specific situations. Drones have greatly reduced casualty risks to the attacking side, but at what cost? When it's easier to order a strike, does not mean they will become more frequent? And with a global drone arms race on the way, do UAVs need similar regulations that nuclear weapons have to make sure the technology doesn't get out of hand?